And we're gonna get started because you are in the right spot for today's webinar, getting started advertising with Facebook and Instagram. My name is Jeffrey Brown, and I'm gonna be your host for the next 45 minutes to an hour for today's webinar. And, you know, as we think about things and as we go through our social media presence and as we gear up for 2022 and gear up for more of the holidays and more of the conversations that we're actively having online, you know, like it or not, social media advertising has become a matter of, you know, when rather than if now for businesses. How many of us in the room have started advertising on social media? You know, raise your hand if you have. Let us know in the chat box if you've experimented with some type of advertising, whether that be on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, maybe LinkedIn. You know, just let us know and let us know your experience as well in the chat box. Now, if any of us have tried organic reach, which I first, we've all tried that first before dipping into advertising funds and things like that. You know, if you've worked with organic reach, it's a little bit harder to come by. And as competition, I feel like is growing every single day, no matter what, and especially in the social space, you know, your paid advertisements, like we were just talking about, they're gonna sometimes be actually often the best way to make sure that you're reaching your new audience. Now, as I like to call this a primer, if you will, but with this primer um, and hopefully throughout this webinar and feel free to ask questions as we go along, I'm hoping that you can get a better idea of what's possible with paid campaigns. And also you're ready to start brainstorming on your own. So two things I wanna ask of you when you leave this webinar is that you have a better idea of paid ad campaigns and number two, you're ready to start brainstorming on your own. And just for a little extra credit, I know you're probably like, oh my gosh, homework, what? And just for a little bit of extra credit, you know, maybe follow along, you know, with your ad that you're setting up. Maybe you're writing down some notes to get some more inspiration, you know, but definitely let us know exactly where you are in your advertising stage, how you've used advertisements before. And we're gonna go ahead and jump to our agenda. Um, like I said today, we have a stacked agenda, and I'm so excited to make sure that you are getting the most out of your advertising opportunities. And one thing, and this is one of my favorite questions to get asked, is why do I have to spend X amount of money to get X amount of results? That's not necessarily true, and we're going to learn that as we are going on throughout this webinar. So like I said, we have a stacked agenda today, but really wanted to make sure that you understood some great benefits for using advertising on both, both Facebook and Instagram. So in today's webinar, you're gonna actually learn how to um, learn the essentials you need before you're actually getting started. So what do I need to make sure I'm getting? It's like going back to that first day of school, fresh book bag, fresh haircut, shoes, you know, you're ready to go. Um, after that, we're gonna go over how to define the content strategy for your social ad. I know we're thinking, oh, I can just promote anything. I don't want us to go into that mindset when we're going to our advertisements, I can promote anything. Yes, I want us to, but I also wanna make sure that we have a content strategy in place, just like we would with our regular social media campaigns. I definitely wanna make sure when we're doing paid campaigns, we're also making sure we have a definite content strategy in place. And last but not least, you know, I'm not gonna let you leave this webinar without going over how to track measure and optimize your results. So we're really going over a lot today and I definitely want to make sure that you're asking questions. Your questions are getting answered. And if I don't get to those questions before the webinar is over, I'm going to also drop my email address in here as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and make sure that we're getting you on the right path to using ads on social media. I'm going to go ahead and just take a quick peek. Okay, great. I love that we're all using, we're engaging with the chat box. We're also using this. And I love that people are putting in their email addresses. You're putting in your Instagram handles and your Facebook handles. Continue to do that. This is just a great way to not only build up a following, but also network and also make sure that you're encouraging each other to stay accountable as well. So I love this. Keep on um, putting that in the chat box. So in this webinar, you're going to learn some essentials you need before you're getting started. Like I said, how to define that content strategy. Um, but one of the common things that I love about this, and I've also included some common topics um, that I think you're going to find useful, like I said, creating that budget and graphics for your ad campaign. So let's go ahead and jump in. Essentials you need before you're getting started. How many of us feel like, and you can raise your hand, you can let me know in the chat box, if you have like a good 
kind of like a good system set up to go ahead and start advertising, maybe set up an ad campaign today after we jump off this webinar. You know, let me know in the chat box if you feel that confident. Raise your hand if you do, you know, let us know. Okay, a couple of us, good. Great, okay. So before we dive into building out your social media advertising campaign, um, there are a few essentials that you'll need to think through and actually decide upon before getting started. Just wanted, like I said, this little primer um, that you all have. So why a target audience matters. A target audience matters for so many reasons, but one of the reasons why it is is because I definitely wanna make sure that we're not just advertising to everyone. You know, like I said that a little bit earlier, if we're talking to everybody, we're not talking to anybody. And while yes, you might think, oh, well, I wanna to appeal to the masses. I wanna make sure that people are seeing my product, my services. Yes, but we also wanna make sure we're coming up with that customer persona. Who is she? Who is he? Who are they? You know, we definitely wanna make sure that we're coming up with this person that let's say for instance, makes 150K a year. They work at a PR firm. Um, they are a female. Um, between ages of 25 and 44. And that is your customer persona. You know, you can give her a name, you can give her accessories, you know, you can definitely make sure that you're giving this customer a persona. And where we're thinking about things like this, I'm going to jump to the next part of this section, is, and don't laugh at me, if you've all heard of Beyonce before, whether you like her music or you don't, there was a great documentary that, documentary that came out about her like a while back. And she's like, I use my alter ego, Sasha Fierce. So when she goes on stage, she's Sasha Fierce. So think of yourself as that while still having that same voice, that same tone that could come across in your persona, they're actually representing on social media. And this way you can actually target your actual audience by coming up with that different or that actual persona that you want your customers to see and engage with on your social media sites. Now, you're gonna need to tell Facebook, Instagram, who your ad is actually targeting. And ad targeting actually helps your ads find the people who will actually love your business. So, oh, awesome, I love this. Great, guys. <laughs> and also see some people that are just now coming into the room. Welcome to our webinar. Um, do know that this is being recorded, so you have to jump to a meeting, jump to a call. Feel free to do so. Now, like I was saying, ad targeting helps your ads find the people who will love your business. And I love when we talk about ads and we can nerd out about these kinds of things like this because as a business owner, you set the rules for where your ads are delivered. Think about that. You can adjust your target audience to be as broad or as well-defined as you would like. So this is where I like for us to actually spend the time going deep into finding your ideal customers, just like we were talking about. Create a complete description or even a buyer's persona like Sasha Fierce and that outlines the following characteristics and details. So you see these um, characteristics um, like demographics, professional details, psychographics. And just to like kind of run over these demographics, of course, are statistical information about your audience. Now, professional details, information about their jobs, their place of, their place of work, excuse me. Psychographics, details about their personalities and innate qualities and goals. Of course, descriptions of what they want to accomplish, Challenges, maybe problems the audience faces regularly. Like think about that, how does your service, your product solve that problem? And influences, maybe media impressions, the audience encounters and also the buying process. How the audience makes purchasing decisions. Are they coming to your website, then to your social media sites, your social sites, then your website? How are they going about that buying process? Are they buying via social? Are they buying just via your website? You have to make sure you're also understanding where your customers are coming from. The more specific you can get about targeting your audience, the better your marketing and business operations will be. Next, you're gonna actually need to figure out what you need to get out of your social ads you know, prior to running them. So we can't just say, oh, I'm gonna do an ad on Instagram and just hope it works. You know, We're not just slapping pasta to the wall and hoping that it sticks. This isn't pasta night at our mother's house. You know, we're looking to build that brand awareness. We want to drive signups and sales. And ultimately, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, that choice is yours. You know, Facebook and Instagram make it so easy to pick a particular goal and build a campaign around that. And that's why I love advertising on Facebook and Instagram so much. And these are some examples of objectives for an Instagram ad. 
Um, so we definitely want to make sure we're looking at these brand awareness, reach, you know, traffic, engagement, um, apps installs, conversions. So it's not like we're just throwing you to the wolves when we're talking about advertising. We definitely want to make sure as you walk through Instagram on and Facebook ads that you're being set up for success. So definitely make sure that you're outlining those objectives. And ultimately, your goal is going to inspire your campaign and its creatives, like your graphics, your content, um, the way that it appeals to people. And the great thing about goal setting is also it ensures that you're tracking the right metrics and KPIs or key performance indicators associated with your campaigns. And I'll dive into those KPIs and what they mean in a little later on. And we're going to dive into that, like, I think in the last section today. So we also want to make sure you're setting your budget. How many of us feel confident in our budget? Without a doubt, you know, raise your hand. Let me know in the chat box if you do. Would love to hear from y'all as well. Okay, yes, good. Okay, you definitely wanna make sure if you have a budget, maybe you don't, you definitely wanna make sure you're putting together, awesome, you're putting together an ideal budget for your campaign. It doesn't have to be super high in order to deliver quality results. And I'm gonna say that again. Your budget does not have to be super high in order to deliver quality results, but it does need enough value to actually achieve objectives. So you can set an overall budget for your campaign with campaign budget optimization or set individual budgets for your ad sets. Now campaign, now campaign budgets and ad set budgets. Campaign budgets, it actually lets you set um, one overarching budget. And that's the great thing about campaign budgets. And this way you can simplify your campaign setup but actually reduce the number of budgets you have to manage manually. Now, ad set budgets. Ad set budgets actually lets you set individual budgets for your ad set campaigns. And if you want more control over your delivery within ad set um, specifics. So this can be useful if you have mixed op optimization goals. Like you just don't wanna drive awareness. You want conversions, you want apps installs, different things like that. Um, so definitely make sure that you're also looking at the different ways that you can set your budgets. And from there, you can choose daily budgets and lifetime budgets. For both campaign and ad set budgets, you can choose whether your budget applies to each day or over the entire life of a campaign or ad set. So those are great things as well. So let's say that your campaign is going to be four or five days. You can give five to $15 for each day or your campaign's gonna run for two months and you wanna give them $100, you can make sure that $100 expands over those two months. Just definitely making sure you know what your budgets have the ability to do and also making sure that you're set up for success when you're looking at this as well. Now we're also gonna be looking at a different side of budgets, traditional, flexible, and zero. So you're also gonna to wanna to consider how you actually wanna manage that budget. So traditional budget, this is where you start with a sum of money and then allocate amounts to each category. I promise all this isn't boring budget talk, but this is actually important when you are setting up your ad campaign. Um, this is where you wanna start with a sum of money and then allocate amounts to each category. And now once a category is depleted, you can't move other funds into it. So some people might wanna stick to this strict traditional budget, but maybe you wanna opt for a more flexible budget. So this is where your um, category depletion can be fulfilled by another category. And did you run out of money in another category and have extra to spare? Maybe you're not going to use this for a radio spot this year. Maybe you're not going to use it to sponsor the Little League team. I know I'm sorry, <laughs> but you definitely want to make sure that you maybe are flexible with that budget. You can move it to another place or another spot. So zero budget. Maybe some of us, and I've worked with business owners and clients that have worked with zero budget. This is when you start every category with zero at the beginning of each budget planning cycle. Now, it sounds kind of crazy, but you can actually increase the amounts of category, justifying the cost every time. And I've worked in these kind of situations, but it actually makes you work a little bit smarter, not harder, because you're like, all right, I'm not really starting with anything, but what can I do for grassroots? Then once I do a little bit of organic, how can I start to do more paid ads? So it's kind of getting you to think, all right, what can I do on the lowest level with no money on my social media sites and then build from there? So there are many ways I want us to think about to manage a marketing budget. 
Don't just think of it as one straight way, one strict way that you have to do this. Some teams, some companies even take a lump sum and adapt as they operate. This isn't advisable if you have multiple components to track. And I've done this, I've done this, I've been in this situation. It just makes it more difficult um, to see how well your budget performs over time. So just definitely making sure that we're not looking at a one size fits all. We're looking at a budget that's gonna be good for not only our company, our employees, our social ad campaigns, but also our customers as well. So definitely making sure that we're looking at that whole spectrum and not just one part of the budget that if I spend X amount of money, it's gonna get me X amount of this return. Social media doesn't work like that in that way. It's gonna be a little bit longer than, you know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, maybe even months. Sometimes to actually see results, it takes a year sometimes, but it really just depends on what you're working with, what you've already done thus far, and also what do you wanna achieve even later? And we're gonna be going over that as we go throughout this webinar too. So define the content strategy for your social ad. Um, just like I made sure that I carved out time to make sure that we were going to do this webinar today, um, I also want to make sure that you're carving out time to define that content strategy for your paid ad. You know who you're advertising to and what your budget is. We've already covered that. Now, the next step of your Facebook and Instagram advertising journey is that you get to finally create the messages and graphics that drive engagement on your social media profiles. So you get to define your strategy right here. So I love this question and I just want us to just let me know in the chat box what your answer actually is. What do the best marketing messages have in common? And just let me know in the chat box what you think. Um, just sound off some of the first things that come to your mind. You know, what does that say? What do the best marketing messages have in common? Okay, so some people are saying emotional pull, strong representative images, visually striking, simple yet making a bold statement, call to action, Angela, okay. Grab attention, solve a problem. All these are great. Um, for starters, you know, they're personal and human. So that emotional pull, um, pretty much everything y'all were saying that call to action, this is all right. Your messages should obviously feel like they are Yes, Alan, okay. They are clear and inviting. That's, Alan, thank you for putting that in. That's super important. Um, if a message isn't clear and it's not inviting, nobody wants to, that's like, I'm sitting out in the cold. I'm like, mm, don't wanna go in. It just doesn't look that great. Doesn't look that inviting. Always make sure, like I've told clients in the past, make sure that front door is cleaned off with that Windex. Make sure you have fresh, fresh flowers out. Make sure that you, you, know, you have a good carpet out. This is your front door to your business, your storefront. And like I said, your messages, they should feel like they're written by humans, not presented purely as sales messages. How many of us have ever opened up an email or come across a social media ad or social media post that's felt purely like a sales message? And we've either unsubscribed or we've unclicked it, we've unfollowed, or we've just kept going about our day. But those messages, sometimes they just don't work. And sometimes I, I am one of those people that fall to ads. I'll share that in a minute. But you also want to make sure they're short and to the point. So I mentioned that a little bit earlier. But most marketing messages can be boiled down to a single sentence or slogan. Brief messages hold readers' attention and, ideal, and are ideal for social media. I can also recommend putting emotions and benefits. Somebody said that a little bit as well, the emotional pull. I love that. I don't know who said that, but thank you so much. Um, above features. Emotions can make a connection with your prospective customers happen, while a laundry list of features and um, specifications don't. The last thing I want to happen is for you and myself to be feature dumped. When we're trying to book a hotel, we're trying to make a reservation, trying to figure out daycare plans for our kids, you know, feature dumping is one of the last things that we want to be bought with. I want to know there's a real person, there's real care on the other side. You know, punchy messages are the ones that people are going to remember. You know, um, I just remember growing up and it's the Coke jingle or maybe it's the JC Pennies. I don't know. Maybe I'm dating myself a little bit, but those jingles, those types of things, they're memorable. Um, and this again speaks to the importance of coming up with a short, 
but actually sweet message that consumers can recall. So content creation and production, and I just wanted to, offers a clear exchange of value for my particular need one. Eric, yes, I love this. Everyone still, and I love that we're still commenting as we're thinking about things, keep that going. Um, Social media has accelerated business competition in the last few years, honestly, since I feel like it started. But developing creative and informative content helps brands stand out and that crowded landscape. And trust me, social media is a very crowded place. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're making the right noise, not just noise, you're making the right noise. <clears throat> Excuse me. So consistently publishing and investing in content, especially visual content, is also imperative for achieving those goals. Um, so whether you produce content all in-house or you outsource, it takes money, time, and a lot of planning. It just does. I'm not going to lie about that. On average, video production costs between $880 to $1,200. But given that the video is a top content format for achieving social goals right now, it's a format you should definitely include in your strategy. How many of us are using videos, whether that's Instagram stories, it's Reels, TikTok, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, Facebook videos. I see a few participants have raised your hand, but also sign off in the chat box and let us know how that's been working for you as well. And what have you been using? Is it good? Is it not good? Do you feel like it's a lot of background work? Do you feel like you're maybe a little editor as you're editing these videos and reels together? You know, sound off. What's your experience? Do you love it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? You know, let us know. Brands publish, and I want you to tell me how many posts that you publish a day. Brands publish an average of 11 posts per day across their social media channels. But depending on what industry you're in, content publishing demands varyingly. So how many of us are posting more than once a day at least, or twice a day? Raise your hand, let me know in the chat box. Need to do more, so Candace, okay. And that makes sense. A few people have been raising their hands. Two to three, Jose, okay. And that's okay. As long as you're getting engagement, are you, is your audience participating in that conversation? Or are you just having a conversation with yourself? If you see that you're not getting a lot of engagement on these posts, maybe take a step back, relax, refocus, and reset. And really make sure that you are looking at these posts to be, how they're supposed to be good for your business and in a good way. We're not just posting for the sake of posting. If that was happening, we could just all be doing it. You wouldn't be here at this webinar. We're posting for a reason. That's to get into conversations. That's to get our customers and prospective customers thinking. Um, and I want to just look at the chat box. Exactly. Um, Jeremy, I love that this point that he made. And he said, I've heard from, from successful influencers. They, they created many bad videos. And I'm looking more for value if it's a basic video. Yes, make those bad videos. Have your kid accidentally walk in as you're trying to make you know, a smoothie or something. Um, maybe if you use a swear word on accident, people wanna see that authenticity. Post those bad videos. Maybe turn it into a bloopers behind the scenes. Um, just really make sure that all in all, you're being authentic. At the end of the day, if that's what you're looking for, that's what your consumers are looking for. And this also leads us to post-production. All that editing, audio and graphic design work still take time and money. Don't let your content fall flat because you forgot to budget in the, the post-production necessary. And sometimes it does take some post-production. Um, but if you're gonna get a paid content route, if you're gonna go through that paid content route, sorry, wanna make sure that made sense. Um, you'll need to include that content creation here or in the general advertising budget. So always think about pre, pre during, and post. Never just think about in the moment, even though I know that's what a lot of us do and it's hard to get out of that mindset, but definitely let's make sure that we're thinking about Pre, during, post. Always thinking about like the whole shebang. No problem, yes. Okay, so I wanna make sure that as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as busy as you are, I wanna make sure that we're making the best educate decision on where to choose where and how your ads appear. I know I said this a bit earlier, I have fallen victim to a lot of ads and it actually ha has happened a lot recently. I don't know what it is, but I think it's me like seeing these products and be like, I've been wanting this for a minute. You know what? It's on sale right now. One of the other easier things is I'm going to say is it's all about payment. How many of us have gotten all the way in an ad and we're like, oh my God, I have to go get my credit card. It's all the way upstairs. 
or it's in the next room. And how many of us are too lazy to go get your card? Let me know in the chat box. I wanna see who actually answers this truthfully and not just raising your hand. How many of us have fall victim to an ad, but then didn't complete the purchase because we were too lazy? Or you did complete the purchase, yeah. <laughs> I love this. Yes, I'm the same way. <laughs> or Debbie, okay, I'm right there with you. Or two tree, it's okay. Um, the other thing about this is, is, um, is how you actually use that payment. So Instagram, Facebook, sometimes they link it to Apple Pay, Amazon Pay, PayPal. Those have been the ways that I've checked out easily. And I'm like, all right, I can go about my day. And I'm like, I just spent all that money, why? But it, it makes it so simple for me to check out. It already has my address and everything linked to it that it's a no brainer. Yes, yes. Oftentimes it costs us what actually, yes, Valerie, or they're like, you know, you can get 20% off and it's like, if you spend a hundred dollars. I'm gonna be honest with, with everyone, please don't do that. <laughs> I've opened so many emails so excited that I get 20% off and then it's like, if you spend a hundred dollars, I don't wanna spend a hundred dollars. That's like maybe one item at some places. Please don't do that to your customers. Please don't click and bait. Please put the full thing in the subject of your email or in the, um, the little context of it. But anyways, back to what we're talking about, the ad placement. Whether you want to use video images or words, or a combination of all those elements, I suggest using a combination because as a millennial, my brain is everywhere, is there's a Facebook ad format that fits your business story or Instagram. Put your business front and center. And this is where I want us to be a little bit selfish and a little bit greedy. This is where I want us to put our business front and center. You've worked hard. You haven't slept some nights, some days. You know, you've spent all X amount of money to get this business out there. This is where you're selfish and you can be selfish about your business. Put that business front and center. So we're going to go through a few of these ad um, types and break them down. So carousel ads. It lets you showcase up to 10 images or videos in a single ad. Sometimes I love this because I can get a full picture. You know, sometimes you watch the movie trailers now and they give you the whole movie. Kind of that's what you want to paint for your customers is that full customer experience. So highlight different products or tell a brand story that develops across each card. Next is going to be a single image or photo ads. You know, offer a clean, simple format to feature engaging imagery and copy. Convey who you are, not what you not what you want, not what you think you customers want to think who you are. Sorry, but cover who you are, convey who you are and what, and do that with high quality images. Video ads, love video. Like I said, it is here to stay. It is not going anywhere. Video ads tell your story with sight, sound and motion, like lights, camera, action. And they come in a range of links and styles. And I love video, video is not going anywhere. And the reason why I love video is because I've looked this up 75%, maybe a little bit more of your consumers do not look at video with sound on. One, they're gonna either listen to their video on loud, they're not gonna know what's going on, or they're gonna listen with their headphones on and they just wanna read it. So let's also make sure that we're putting captions into our videos as well. And last you have slideshow. Our video like ads made of motion sound and text, but there are more lightweight clips that help you tell your story across devices and connection speeds. So that might be something else that you wanna do. So you can also display your ads in Messenger. It pops up, I love it. I'm about to chat my dentist, an ad, okay. Made a dentist appointment for this week. Stories, playables. I just want us as entrepreneurs and as business owners, I want you, not anyone else, not you know the person next to you, your business partner, I want you to find the right ad format that's gonna work for your business. You know, definitely wanna make sure that you're doing that. And of course, ad placement. So depending on the objective of you choose when you create your campaign, your ads, they can appear, like I said, in Instagram Messenger, Audience Network, what have you. In most cases, you're gonna choose automatic placements, which I love this part, it actually allows Facebook to maximize your budget, but also show your ads where they're likely to perform best. So if you're new to ads, you're like, I don't know what's really going on, let them do the work for you. It's like when you're working out, the first time you do a set, you're learning the set. The second time you're doing, you're getting into it, you're going through it with the muscles, and the last time is the best set. 
So with ads, let's the first time we're going through it, let's make sure that we're soaking it all in. We're being that anxious student in class, like asking those questions. This is our time to learn the most is when you're first jumping into something, or maybe you're coming back to it because you're like, oh, ads hurt me in the past and I want to get back into it. So definitely make sure that we're taking our time, we're easing into it and we're learning everything we can about advertising and social media realm. So manual placements, they're gonna allow you to exclude certain placements instead. So I'm gonna say this to you, uncheck the box next to each placement to remove it. And if you don't see a box, your ad type or objective doesn't support the placement. Now, Facebook recommends automatic placements because it allows their delivery system. And this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier, to make the most of your budget. And the big thing about this is, is Facebook, it places your ad on all placements available for your settings on Facebook, Instagram, Audience Network, Messenger, Stories, Live. Um, their targeting works the same across, I wanna say all their available placements. So including more placements often helps you find a wider audience. Um, you're probably thinking, Jeffrey, but you just said if you're targeting everyone, you're not talking to anybody. Yes, but you also wanna make sure that you're also looking at your audience to cast that net a little bit wider. So maybe it's a town over, maybe it's, um, maybe you're a touristy business. So people are coming from out of state, out of country. So it really depends on how you target your audience and what's gonna be the best for you and your customers. Okay. And also wanna jump into this chat box really quick, sorry. <laughs> or an ongoing, Subscription, yes, or it's too impulsive. I get lazy about getting the card. Yes, if I'm feeling like, mm, I want this, but it can hold off, just hold it out, get the card later. And if I'm feeling it later, then I might buy it. But we also wanna make sure that you have great graphics. How many of us have ever clicked on an email and you're like, what is this 1980s, 1990s retro website going on? What is this flashing that's making my eyes go crazy? We definitely wanna make sure that if we're gonna talk the talk, we're gonna walk the walk with our graphics. So this comes to the part of where we're getting into the graphic part and creating those great graphics for our ad. So you wanna make sure your content, like I said, I'm gonna say this again, is really standing out from that noise. Look, we're here to make some noise, not just the same noise everybody else is making. So many other businesses, big and small, you know, they're all competing in the same space for similar audiences. And we spoke earlier, earlier about targeting a tailored audience. So this is going to definitely help you narrow your focus. However, however, going to put up a hand sign, you know, you're going to also need some killer content. And I said this again, content is king or queen to really make a big impression and capture their attention. A lot of these graphics, I'm not going to lie to y'all, were created in GoDaddy Studio. If you haven't had a chance to check that out, um, make sure you do so. Um, so definitely make sure that you are able to um, look at that as well. It's just a really great tool, really helpful. Um, but for the caption or copy of your ad, somebody said this a little bit earlier too when we are talking about captions and things, is always include a call to action. I love that part. Always include that call to action. That just tells your users where to click. And you must tell your audience what to do if you want them to do something. If you want your users to click a link or visit your website, be sure to include a call to action that tells them exactly what to do. I love Candace, okay. She's like, I only use GoDaddy Studio, super easy. So Candace is talking the talk and I'm gonna have to drop this link in here because pretty much she was like, you need to drop them a link. So I'm gonna do that as well. <laughs> But definitely make sure you give that link a check out, you guys. It's really, really great. And like Candace said, it's super simple to use. So best practices for powerful ads. I want us to make sure that we're following these best practices. You're probably thinking, Jeffrey, you've shared a lot of best practices today. Take a screenshot, come back to this recording later on, you know, once you've had your lunch. But show people using your product. Don't give me a stock photo. Don't give me, you know, these other things. Paint that picture for me. What are your customers looking to do when they come to your social or websites? They're looking to buy. They're looking to find out more information. And it's our job to make sure that we're just carrying them along that little customer journey as they go along. So show people using your product. If you have influencers or customer advocates that have come into your business, getting a facial, a foot rub, their eyebrows done, working out and they take pictures, you know, either go up to them after their workout or 
whatever they're doing with your business, be like, hey, so you take some great pictures. Do you mind if we reuse these at a later date? This is going to show people actually using your product and your services. And it's not in a gimmicky salesy way. It's real people using your real products and services. So rather than just put up a stock image or something, use people actually using your real products and photos. Remember, less text is more. But sometimes more is less. So it just really depends. But too much copy is going to be distracting. And it can lead to your ad being shown to fewer people. And images that are uncluttered by text have a greater impact. So stick to the most important details. Remember, not everybody's gonna remember everything about it, but they're gonna remember exactly the point that you wanted to get across in your ad. So definitely make sure that you have that tailored, ready to go, and it's looking good. So have a single focal point. Don't have your customers looking everywhere, have them clicking all these links, because you know what they're gonna do? Forget to buy, forget to purchase, forget to make a reservation, forget to make an appointment. Having a single focal point is going to ensure that you're only asking people to look at one thing, one thing. So if you're trying to include too many things on one image, consider using those carousel ad or video ads that we were talking about a little bit earlier. <laughs> and is, yes, she's my hype person today. So maintain visual consistency. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone to a social media page, then to a website, and I'm like, what is this? What is going on here? Like, is this still the same company? Maintain visual consistency. If you're running multiple ad sets within a single campaign, be sure all your images have that consistent theme and tied together visually. Like I said, take them on that customer journey. Take them on that walk. That's exactly what you want your customers to do. People are going to also be able to easily recognize your ad and stop to see what else you have to say. Use high resolution photos. How many of us have got to an image and we're like, why is it so pixelated? Why does this not look so good? And you're like, mm, this doesn't look great right now. I'm going to keep on going to the other ones. Or you're like, wait, this is all kind of wonky or something didn't load right. You don't have to be a professional photographer to create stunning ads. And if you are, lend that expertise or that help to your team. Just pay attention to the size and also the quality of media files you're working with. I'm going to drop another link in the chat box as well. You can find a lot of this. Um, at facebookbusiness.com. And that's where all this information is coming. You definitely want to make sure that you're looking at this. Candace, you're cracking me up today. So dropping this link in there for y'all as well. But also experiment with visuals. Play with different images and formats before you commit to a particular ad. You know, get in your chair, take an aerial shot. Um, you know, do an out of focus picture. Love those. Those are great. Um, head on, do a lot of different angles, but also make sure that you're getting more than one shot. Just like you see models getting photographed, or if you remember top model when Tyra Banks is like, when the camera clicks, you move. That's how you should be doing. You should be moving, getting those different angles, getting that different image or story of your image to tell your story on social media. In our last section, track, measure, and optimize those results. Um, like someone told me before, if you're just doing something over and over again, of course, it's insanity. So take a step back, relax, refocus, restart, and learn how to actually track and look at your metrics on your social media sites. Just not for ads, but like in general for social. How many of us are actually checking out our metrics and analytics across our social review sites or websites? You know, let me know in the chat box if you are. You know, maybe you don't know where your metrics are located. Maybe you do. Um, maybe you just started yesterday and you're like, Jeffrey, that's why I'm here. I saw about this track and measuring, and that's why I wanted to come to this webinar. You know, results are key to building and refining your social ad strategy, but not only that, but like just in everything in life. It shows you what you're, what's working and what's not working. At the end of the day, as entrepreneurs, that's going to give you the best insight of to make the best, best business decision possible, is if you can see what's working for you and what's not working for you. This is going to allow you to shift resources, tactics, time, all of that to be more effective. Again, working smarter, not harder. Because when you think about it, social ROI or return on investment can often be tricky to small business owners, entrepreneurs, and who aren't familiar with a lot of marketing lingo. So I'm going to go over some important definitions. I know definitions, some key metrics, some how-tos in this last but most important important section that we're going to go over. 
So really hope that, you know, all of you that have been with me this whole time, thank you so much. We're gonna go through this last part of this section of our webinar. And then I actually wanted to open up to Q&A. So any questions that you might have, go ahead and start slotting those in the Q&A box. And once we wrap up with this section, we're gonna dive first into Q&A with those questions. All right. So just like with everything, whether you're gonna try out for soccer, you know, you set those New Year's goals. I don't like to call them resolutions. Uh, <laughs> you gotta make sure your goals are clear and reachable. Each one should be specific, you know, simple, sensible, significant, um, measurable, meaningful, motivating. Don't, like I said, we're not just slapping a pasta against the wall. We wanna make sure that sauce is thick, it's ready, it's bubbling, and people are gonna love it. You also wanna make sure that they're achievable. I love a REACH goal, just like, you know, we have our REACH schools when we're applying to college, but also have those safety schools as well. Do something that you can achieve, not something that's like, oh, I want to get 20 million followers by the end of the year. No, we want to make sure we're setting realistic goals, things that we can obtain. Um, relevant. Is it reasonable, realistic, resource, results-based? Again, if it doesn't end with one of those things, then let's not set those goals. Let's make sure that we're setting these goals that we can obtain and time bound, you know, let's just not set a goal and be like, all right, we'll just get to it when we get to it. No, we wanna make sure we're setting some parameters. We wanna set some guidelines, those expectations. Definitely make sure that you're setting your goals and definitely making sure, remember, we're not just doing this for our content strategy, but also with ads as well. For example, if your objective is to grow conversions a good goal might be a specific number of leads you want to drive via social for the quarter. Or maybe increasing landing page conversions when they land on the landing page to check out with your product um, by 10% at the end of the year. You know, whatever the goal be, what it be, what it may be, be sure to measure past performance to establish benchmarks. And if you don't, maybe look at some industry benchmarks as well. So definitely making sure we're not just settling for status quo. So what metrics matter the most? You know, I love metrics. I love making sure that we're gonna get into this as well, but performance, engagement, conversions, and settings. So performance, you know, results, reach, frequency, impressions, definitely make sure that we're looking at these. Um, engagement can be page and post likes, messages, media, clicks, and awareness, those things following engagement. Conversions. They could be for you to track metrics off the Facebook platform that led to maybe a sale, download, or install. And settings include metrics like your start date, end date, ad set time, ad ID, delivery, bid, and objective. All those are like very marketing ad lingo terms, but check your metrics regularly. That's like the one thing I want us to get out of this webinar today. If you have any homework to do is to go check those metrics right after this webinar. You can have reports sent to your inbox on specific days of the weeks, so you don't have to remember to pull them yourself, or just set a little calendar reminder. So definitely making sure that you are looking at your metrics, you know what metrics matter the most, but also what metrics matter the most to you and your business and your customers. All right. So customize your metrics based on your desired KPIs. People are like, what are KPIs? Your key performance indicators. Key performance indicators, not VIP. Could be cool though. But there are a lot of metrics that you can use to create ads that get people to do something. And that at the end of the day is what we want our customers to do is to do something. Your ad campaigns need a clear objective so that the metrics have meaning. So this is what we call those key performance indicators or KPIs. So if you're not clear on, on what the outcome, on what you want the outcome to be or how you're going to measure those results, um, it doesn't matter how good the insights look, whether you choose the cost per click, click through rate, cost per conversion, or ad impressions. At the end of the day, these performance metrics will help you define the success of your advertising campaigns. And that's what we ultimately want to do. Um, you can even customize these reports so you can see exactly what you need to order to make decisions like the image you see here. Just want to check chat box really quick. Oh, Susan, thank you so much for the compliment one. Number two, you're gonna be able to get that recording later on for this webinar. So I'm sorry that you have to leave, but love that you got to attend. 
So invest your time wisely. We've got to make sure that you are on the regular evaluating the success and failures of your social media advertising campaigns. So ask yourself these three questions, or these questions, not three. <laughs> Why am I investing in ad space, number one? Am I reaching my target audience well? Is my ad format performing well? Maybe you need to switch it up. And how are my ads unique? Like I said earlier, what is this serving? What purpose is this ad for? And from there, you know, it's just off to the races. It's time to optimize your campaign to deliver better results, make adjustments, consider A-B testing, um, or just maybe other target audience. Keep your business goal in mind, though, throughout this entire process. So I know we've went over a lot of packed great information. We're going to Q&A in just a second. But today you learned the essentials you need before getting started, the how to define the content strategy for your social ad, and track, measure, and optimize your results. So to wrap things up, paid advertising on Facebook and Instagram have and you know, will continue to stay and become an essential component of a successful social media strategy. So advertising on these platforms has been proven to increase brain awareness, attract those new customers, increase revenue for your business of all sizes. But if you want to accelerate your marketing efforts and have a budget for it, it's worth exploring paid advertising. And I wouldn't just say this. Um, so we're gonna dive into some Q and A's, but I'll check the chat box really quick. And yes, you will be able to get a copy of this recordings, a copy of this recording. Yes, thank you all. So let's jump into this Q and A. So yes, you will get that copy of the recording with fundraising, Jeremy. Um, Say you're fundraising money for a volunteer project. How do you feel about third-party sites like Kickstarter or GoFundMe as opposed to doing it directly? Um, always love those sites. I've had to set up campaigns for customers and clients like that as well. But I also suggest using stickers in your Instagram stories, your Facebook stories to get those donations as well. And it puts it directly into your Instagram or Facebook account and you can link that to your bank account too. So it just really depends on how you approach that and what you see best for getting those, sorry, getting that money into your account with as little fees as possible. Yes, and I'll drop my email in there as well. Do you think of, so Tina asks, what do you think of obtaining an app for business? I think it's great. Um, I use apps a lot for businesses. It makes it easier for me to do some certain things like book appointments, cancel things. And plus it keeps it kind of compartmentalized for me in this area as well. Yes, Jen, the ads do have that. Um, so you will be able to look at that as well. And Teresa, you will get a copy of this webinar later on today. Just be on the lookout for that. Peggy says, I'm very new to all of this and just try to advertise on Facebook. My ad was rejected for unacceptable business practice. Even my business is recognized by the state. I have any suggestions on this? Yes, it's probably to do with like guidelines and images and content. So I dropped a link a little bit for it and I'm gonna go into here right now and drop a link for our GoDaddy garage. Like it's our blogs. So please um, use this link. And when you look in the search bar, type in advertising or social ads, and it'll direct you to where you need to look up some information. But definitely making sure that everything is in their perimeter, their guidelines, before you go to posting. Um, and just definitely make sure that you look at those sizing images and the content guidelines as well, because it could have been outside of that. But it's just good to double check everything. No, thank you so much. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. <laughs> No, thank you, Kimberly. Love this. Thank you. And again, um, let me drop my email address in here for everyone who have any questions and you can't think of them right now. Um, please feel free to email me and I will get back to you as soon as possible with GDS webinars at godaddy.com. No, thank you, Carrie. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. And again, just want to say a huge thank you to everyone that attended our webinar today. I hope you all have a great rest of your Tuesday. Um, Yes, it can be Valerie, it can be scary. Um, no, thank you. But again, I hope you have a great Wednesday. Have a great rest of your week. 
love what you do, do what you love. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, and again, have a great rest of your week, everyone. And thank you all for attending our webinar today with GoDaddy. Have a great one, everyone. Bye now.